chapter 2 and verse 17 and 18. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And so this is the, this is the promise of God. This is the birth of the church. This is a word that uh, if you read it, it says in the last days. It doesn't say, hey, in the beginning of the church and now that's been done away with. So we're knowing that the last days have started at Pentecost, that there is something new. The church is being birthed and we are in those last days. And so God is going and he's saying that no longer is it going to be just the kings or the prophets. No longer is it going to be just certain individuals. They're going to have the Spirit of God poured out on them. But God's saying, I'm going to pour it out on everyone. Everyone that will come to me. Everyone that will receive Yeshua Jesus. Everyone that will yield to me. That I will pour out my Spirit in their lives. And he says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. So this is a generational uh, blessing. Not just speaking of us. We are sons and daughters of generations before us. But we also have sons and daughters. So the generational blessing continues. So we claim this blessing over our family, that the Spirit of God is poured out upon them, and that they will hear the voice of God, that they will see the things of God clearly, and that they will declare what God has spoken. They will prophesy. But he says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. So when you're prophesying, remember that the Holy Spirit was really giving me this in a, in a different in a different understanding and you can take it i hope you're going to take it it's really simple but what he's saying is when you hear the promise of god and you declare that promise before you see it with your eye if you're speaking the word of god where he has given you a rhema word this is your life this is who you are uh exam for example when you say do you know if you're going to make it to heaven and you, what do you say? Yes, I'm going to make it to heaven. Why? Jesus is my Savior and Lord. What are you doing? You are speaking the word of God, but you are foretelling what God has already declared about you. You don't have a doubt about it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came into your life. He transformed you. You remember that experience. And so now you are declaring what God has spoken. You are prophesying that over your life. So, so God is saying, I want you to hear my word. I want you to get it in your spirit. And I want you to declare it because the, the righteous will live by faith. They do not live by sight. They do not live by just what you see with your eyes. They live by what God's word says. So, and so in your life, God is saying, I'm going to pour out my spirit in your life. You're going to speak what I speak over your life. Before you've seen it, you're going to declare what God has spoken. So then he says, your son's and daughters. So remember, this is an amazing thing because there's, it's not putting women down. Oh, it's only for men. But it is like God saying, when you're in the spirit, there is no difference, Greek nor Jew, male nor female. So when the spirit of God comes on you, God is saying, I'm going to cause you to speak my word and your word is going to penetrate the earth and transform the earth because God says he does nothing unless he first reveals it to his prophets. So you may say, ah, am I a prophet? Well, maybe you're not in the office of a prophet, but you can hear the voice of God and you can declare what God has spoken over your life because you, you have heard the Spirit of God speak it to you. And so you're going to declare what God has spoken, right? So he says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. And then it says, your young men will see visions and your old men dream dreams. And you know, we've looked at this and gone, well, the old men, they're going to be just dreaming and they're so old, they're always taking a nap and so they're dreaming. And then the young guys, they're seeing vision and it's like, I want to see. And then dreams when you're asleep and visions when you're awake. And yeah, there's, that's, that's right. But this is the thing the Holy Spirit was showing me is that this is a generational blessing. He's saying that your sons and daughters. So first he's starting out that this is going to come not just you got to remember, you are a son and a daughter. You are somebody's son. You are somebody's daughter. And God is saying that that anointing is going to come in your life. But yet, when the old men seem dreams, that's because they've been in the presence of God. 
they've seen how maybe how the enemies wanted to do things and yet they're going you know what i got a dream of how it's going to be different i got a i got a dream of how this is not going to be the same that's what martin luther was famous for he said i have a dream that one day all men doesn't matter the color of their skin that they'll walk side by side that they'll work side by side that they won't be judged on the color of their skin but the content of their character right i've seen a picture where where racism is is not is not the rule of the day and so when you have a dream you're saying i got a dream that there is something different in our life so what can you have a dream of you can have a dream that your children love god with all their heart with all their mind with all their soul with all their strength i can get into the the presence of god and i get into prayer and so god's saying i want to give you a dream of that where you see your children filled with the spirit of god and they begin to prophesy so god is saying what is that he's saying you're old men and i don't want to say just men i believe women too right we said sons and daughters so we're using this as a as kind of a term of uh, of uh, just mankind but you're gonna have a dream so what is your dream well god is showing us in the word that he wants to give you a dream because he doesn't want you to have the status quo he wants you to look in your life and he wants you to say, hey, this has been happening in my life and this is where I am and I still love God and I'm going okay. But God is going, I got more for you. And so God will give you a dream because he wants to give more into your life. So I want you to pass this dream on to your children and to declare the dream uh, of righteousness in their life or of health in their life or prosperity or peace or marriages that that uh that that uh that stay married and stay together their entire life in a family unit that stays together i have a dream for that and i have a desire for that that every generational curse is broken that the blood of jesus covers you right so as you have that dream remember that when we get into the word that we see jacob has this dream and when he has a dream of the sheep that are he says i had a dream the sheep were streaked speckled and spotted so just because you have a dream doesn't mean that you know what to do with that dream right so i saw this i had a dream of this i saw god saying this so now what god's saying is the young men are going to have vision and so i believe that it's young because he's saying i want you to have energy he said that if you will wait upon me, you will renew your strength. You'll mount up as on wings of eagles. So he's saying, I want you to wait upon me to get in my presence, and I'm going to renew your strength, and I am going to give you an interpretation to the dream, which becomes a vision on steps on how to move into what God has placed in that dream. A dream, then, is more like your general goal where you're saying, hey, this is what I want for my family. But the vision, I get, a, I get a picture on what I need to be doing and the steps I need to be taking to move into that dream, right? So that's why I want to have both. I want to have dreams that I can pass on to generations uh, that are coming, but I also want them to have vision and how to move into everything that God has for them. Let's look at Habakkuk 2.2, 2, because this is a scripture that we Habakkuk know well, but it's, going, we need a change it's here. really we need simple. To and, uh, and so and the wanna, Spirit of God, after he's seeking word. God, now this is important. Whenever you're going to get a dream, it's because you're seeking God, right? That when Jacob was, was leaving and he was going off to a foreign land, that he laid his head down on this rock and he had a dream of the angels ascending and descending. And that place was Bethel. And we know that Abram had been there before, had anointed that place. And that there was an anointing that was coming down. It was a generational blessing. But now Jacob is getting a dream and a vision of this. And God is speaking a word to him and it's changing his life, right? So he's getting a dream, but he's going, man, a lot of times there can be, and I don't want you to feel, oh, uh, because the word says you got to move in faith. You know, you're not to move in fear. But fear is a normal, uh, uh, it's just a normal trait of life. Why? Because you're either going to run or you're going to fight. You're either going to run or you're going to fight. And so the enemy wants to cause you to fear to stop you. 
And God's going, no, I want to, the enemy says you're going to stop, but I'm going to empower you to stand for God and to see the things of God come to pass in your life. Amen? Amen. So the word says, uh, the, the, so the Lord replied, write down the revelation. Okay, the dream is not so much the revelation. It's a picture of what you want to see, and it may or may not make sense to you. Okay, uh, but how do I get there? I have to have revelation on how to take steps toward that dream, right? So if I'm praying and I have a dream where I see, uh, maybe you see your, your, you and your wife and you're out there and, and you're out on the porch and you're drinking coffee and, and you see your children around again, that's a great dream. How do I get there? Well, okay, now I need to have revelation. How do I stand to see myself financially successful? How do I stand to see myself healthy? How do I stand to see myself at peace? How do I stand to see my family in unity? And what steps do I take to bring all of this together? Because the dream is there and it's, it, can be, it can be beautiful, but it's vague. And God's going, no, I want to give you revelation because God said that if you're my disciple, you're going to know the truth. The truth's going to set you free. So it's not enough just to have a dream. We have to get revelation on how I am going to move into the dream that God has given me. It's important, right? So here, the word of God is coming to Habakkuk, and he says, write down the revelation. He didn't say write down the dream. He's saying you need to be in a place where you see Jesus. You see, this is every dream you have. It can come from your own heart. It can come from uh, Hollywood. It can come from the world, or it can come from God. And there's a subtle variance because the enemy always likes to take that that God would give you and twist it, and he puts you first, and God's going, no, if you'll see me first, then I will bless you, right? So that's the reason you're going to see that Abram is a very wealthy man, and yet he loves God, and he trusts God, and he believes God. And wealth isn't a problem. And yet if we read later in the scripture, it says wealth and money can be the root of all evil. Why? Because it can, it can shape you in the wrong way. But so what well, God's going, I want to get a revelation. So if you're praying, again, if I am now going to get a dream of being financially uh, uh, free, then why are you going to be free? Well, it's really simple. Because you love God. Because you're God's child. Because God said in his word he would meet all your needs. Because God said, I'm going to bless you coming in and I'm going to bless you going out. And I'm going to cause a blessing to come into your life. And you're going to spread that blessing and that dream to the next generation. And wherever you're going, right? And into your children, into your children's children, into your life. So he says, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. So number one... Let's look at the here in your notes. It says, I got to seek God's word. I got to get a revelation. I got to understand. I have a dream, and God gave me a dream, but now I need revelation. On, is there something that I need to do to move toward the fulfillment of that dream that he put in my heart, right? So see the dream. It reveals circumstances that are going to change. So this is important because the dream is always revealing, if you look in the scripture, whenever God comes and gives a dream, he's saying, I'm not leaving you in the status quo. I'm not leaving you on how it's been in your life or generations before. There is something that is going to change. So the dream always speaks of a, of a, of a change where God's saying, I'm going to bring you into something more for your life. So here they are. They're in slavery. They're in captivity. They are uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, inheritance of Abraham, they've come into this place, and God goes, no, I'm going to give you a dream that you're going to come into a promised land flowing with milk and honey, that you're going to be free from captivity, that you're going to be free to worship, that your wives are going to go with you, that your children are going to go with you, that your finances are going to go with you. Remember that? that remember when uh, Moses was going to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, okay, with all the different plagues, it says, okay, you can go and the men can go, but your wives and families, they can't go. And of course, they said, no, we're not going to stand for that. 
And then he says, okay, your wives and family can go, but your flocks and your finances can't go. No, we're not going to stand for that. So the dream then is moving me from one circumstance into some, a new situation in my life. But how am I going to get there? See, okay, I want to go to the promised land, but how do I get there? So, <laughs> well, there's going to be battles. There's going to be things you have to overcome. There's going to be things that you have to get rid of in your life. There's got to be things in your life that you say, I don't want this in my life anymore. This isn't from God. I want to get rid of this because i got a dream. And so the dream then is going to give you revelation where you're going to move from a status quo into something new. And remember that the dream, if it's from God, it always is going to reveal Jesus in some way. Remember that Joseph is praying. He says, my sheath is standing up. Your sheaths are bowing down to my sheath. And so then we're going, oh, we're bowing down to Joseph. But no, I want to tell you what. Joseph's sheath is the bread of life. Joseph's sheath is miraculous from God. Joseph's sheath is because of a covenant. Joseph's sheath is because God has given him a, a favor. He has interpreted dreams. He has promoted him. He has brought him out of the pit. Joseph's sheep is, I believe, referring to Jesus. Because that's who Joseph is. And so he's saying what you're going to bow down to is the plan of Jesus in my life. Why? Because he wants to meet your needs. Because he doesn't want you to die in the famine. Because he doesn't want you to be separated. Because you see, when you and your finances bow down to Jesus and his plan, then something transforms, right? So that's what you're seeing. So, so God's trying to say, I want you to see Jesus in that dream. So if your family is together in unity, it's not just, oh, we're having a good time. That's good. But it's because my family has a destiny for eternity. They're the family of God. And I'm going to stand for them. And I'm going to believe that their lives are changing, right? So my dream then involves Jesus. If I'm asking God for supernatural uh uh, financial breakthrough, you can be really off on that. And that's why you'll hear a lot of people teach against that because they're going to go, oh, that you're in the flesh, you're looking for that. And no, God wants to bless you, but he wants your heart to be after him. And what you'll see that even when Jacob is leaving, he goes, God, if you're with me and what you said is true and you bring me back to this place, then when I come back, I will give you a tenth of everything you've given me. He says, I'm going to recognize. So what is he saying? I'm recognizing that you're my provider. I'm recognizing that you, and I believe this because we have this understanding now, that Yeshua Jesus is the first fruits. That because Jesus came into the earth, the curse is broken, that he is the first fruits among all creation. And so here we have Jacob having a dream and he's saying, God, I'm seeing this and I'm going to do what you say. So his dream is going to include the revelation that God is his source, that he has a relationship with God, and that he's going to declare this to his family. So that's really important, okay? So number one, the Lord said, write down the revelation. So God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. You will receive revelation of Jesus for your life. That's what God said. That isn't a question. Your sons and daughters will hear the voice of God and declare what God has said before they even see it come in their life. So whenever you're prophesying, remember, you're speaking something that you haven't seen in that situation. I'm declaring that by his stripes I am healed. I'm declaring that all my needs are met according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I'm declaring that, that, that I have peace in my life. That he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I'm declaring that. Well, I'm not married yet. Yes, but God is on the case, and I belong to God, and God said it's not good for man to be alone. So I declare then, and I thank you, God, that my marriage is a blessing to me, and my marriage is a blessing to my spouse. Amen? So you declare that uh, because you're a blessing from God. All right, so... Seek uh, the word of God, see the dream. It reveals circumstances that are going to change, and it gives you a revelation of Jesus in the dream. So the dream 
That's what the revelation is going to do. I'm going to get a dream, and I'm going to see Jesus in it, and that's how, that's how my life changes. Remember, a lot of times you're going to pray, and as you're praying, and you may not know what to pray, but God says the Holy Spirit's going to pray for you and through you. I want to find out. I want to find out in his word because he always goes by the word of God. He is the word. And so if he's praying that, I want my prayer to come into agreement with his prayer. Right? So that's part of what I'm doing when I get revelation. I'm saying, Lord, I want my prayer, I want my dream to come into agreement with your dream and your prayer for my life. Okay, so once I see Jesus in that, and Jesus is declaring it, he says, write down the revelation. So whatever you are going to do in your life, God is saying, I want you to write down the revelation. The dream's not understood until the revelation's understood. And then God, God wants to, you to remember the sign of God's covenant with you. So when he says, write it down, okay, so this, this is what we see. When we take communion, what have we done? Jesus said, I want you to do this until I return. Why? So you can remember the covenant, not just remember, remember the covenant that I went to the cross, that I took the sins upon my life, that I paid the penalty for your sin. So in a picture, he's writing down the revelation, right? It's a picture, but it's revelation. That's why I say a picture can speak a thousand words. So he's showing you that in that communion, in that little piece of bread, I don't just say, oh, it's bread. But I say, no, this is the life of Jesus. This is his body that was given for me. He, he took his stripes upon his body so that I would be healed. He, he took his, my sins upon himself so that I would be free of the power of sin, that I would have eternal life. And then I take the juice and I say, what is this juice? This juice isn't just juice or, or wine. This is the blood of Jesus that was poured out for me. As the sacrifices were poured out, his blood has been poured out to purify me. So not only am I forgiven, but I am purified. So now I want you to lift up holy hands and so I can come into the presence of God because he's the one that makes me holy. He's the one that makes me worthy. He's the one that has redeemed me. So when I get a picture of Jesus, then I write it down. Why? So that I can remember what he's done. And that's why we'll often come in and go, hey, look at what Jesus, God wrote down. We're going to receive communion today. What are we doing? We're looking at what God wrote down, right? So there's, another, there's other things that God's written down. So God goes to Noah, and uh, Noah's there, and the world is, it says that they were always focused on evil all the time, that men were, oh, I don't even want to get into particular sins, but there was a lot of sin on the earth, a lot of it. And so God said, that's it. I've had enough. It's done. I mean, with one sin, God says, you're going to die. So God brings his mercy and he says, I'm going to put it in this place. And if you'll receive uh, uh, me, then you're going to receive mercy. But if you want to go your own way, then that's what sin brings. Right? And so now Noah's on this place. And after that, when Noah comes out, God says, look in the sky. What do you see? He sees a rainbow. What's the rainbow for? A promise. God says, I'm never, he said, this hurt me really bad. This, this, this caused me grief. I'll never do this again because I love you and I want a relationship with you. And so that promise is God said that he would never destroy the earth again by, by a flood. And so he gives a picture. And so every time he comes with a picture, he, he gives you a picture of who he is, right? So then he's saying, I want you to get a vision. I want to make it simple. I want to make it plain. So when you see the cross, yes, was the cross an instrument of torture? Yes. But God changed it into an instrument of grace so that you would remember that he, even though the enemy came to steal, kill, to destroy, Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly because he came off the cross and he went into the grave and on the third day he rose again. So I get a vision and I get a picture. So how does that affect my life? So God is going, I want you to write down the vision 
And so that why? And look at what it says, and it's really simple. So number one, uh, read the scripture again. Then the Lord replied, write down the vision, make it plain on tablets so that Harold may run with it. Okay, what do you mean run with it? What does a herald do? Hark the herald angels sing. Why, why are they heralds? I used to have, when I was a kid, I remember the newspaper used to be the herald. What do you mean the herald? What are they doing? They're declaring what's happened, right? And so God is going, if you will get the vision, I want you to declare what has happened. Well, it still hasn't happened yet. Haven't quite seen it yet. Uh, for unto you a child is born, right? And he's bringing joy. He's bringing salvation. Well, I haven't seen joy and salvation coming to all the earth, so I'm not going to declare that yet. No, it's already been done. So what God is going is when I declare it, I'm going to give you a dream of a circumstance that is different where you are now, and I want you to declare what I have spoken. I want you to make it simple so that you can be that herald and you can declare it. So if you're declaring a dream that hasn't happened, you are, in fact, and it's from God, you are prophesying. You're declaring it. This is what God said. This is what his promise is. And I'm thanking you for it, God. And so you begin to move in that prophetic realm. Why? Because now you're saying, now I'm opening myself to the word of God and to the promises of God so that I can speak that promise into my life. Oh, but you don't see it yet. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to run with it. I'm going to run with it. Okay, what if somebody told you, hey, why don't you run with this? What does that mean? It means grab onto it, take it, do it. So God is going, I want you to get a revelation. I want you to see it. And I want you to live it, man. You can take it and take it to the bank. You can run with it, right? All right. So let's look at what the next part of the scripture says in Habakkuk 2.3. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end, and it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come, and it will not delay. So here, God's trying to tell you, God comes to Abram, and he says, Abram, Abram, uh, look up from where you are. I'm going to give you a dream because you've been, you've been a little bit discouraged, and you've been looking down, and you've been looking in the natural, and you're feeling like Eliezer, your servant, is going to inherit everything, and you're not going to have a child. Revel it says the revelation awaits an appointed time. So when you are heralding it, don't get discouraged if you haven't seen it happen today. Stop it. Herald it. Declare it. Be ready to go all the way into heaven with it. And if you get into heaven, you go, well, I didn't see it happen. Okay, well, Abram waited, and he spoke it, and the next generation was going to do it. Well, I didn't see it happen. Well, the next generation is going to do it. I didn't see it happen. The next, God's going, just stand on it. It's coming. It's coming to pass. You're going to see it. So the revelation awaits an appointed time. God has a time set for it. It speaks of the end. Okay, so God's revelation always does not speak of your current circumstances. It does not speak what you're going through right now. Oh, you're in the storm. You're in the storm. Oh, you love Jesus. You're in the storm. No, it goes, I'm going to the other side. The revelation says that we're going to the other side. The revelation says I'm going into the promised land. Oh, but you're at Jericho's walls now and their walls are so big and they were probably going to die. That's what they did in Numbers 14. And God's going, no, you're coming into what I have for you. You're going into a land flowing with milk and honey. You're going into life. And do you know that individuals that went through all those trials, they survived 40 years in the desert, and they went into the promised land. God's going, if you get a dream, God's going, I want you to have a simple plan on how you're going to reach that dream. I want you to make it simple. This is the dream, but I want you to get revelation. This is what I'm going to do. 
God's shown me that I'm going to do this, and this is what I'm going to do. Okay. And then it says, run with it, which means I'm going to believe it. I'm going to live for it. I'm going to speak it out. I'm going to declare it. And then I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to believe that it's not going to happen. I'm going to, it's maybe an appointed time. It speaks to the end, but I'm going to all that God has for me. I've shared this before. I'm just sharing with you again. When we were young, we used to tell the kids, hey, we're going to Disneyland. And as we'd go to Disneyland, sometimes we'd pass by the desert where the dunes are. You know, that's pretty cool, right? Have you ever driven up there? You should get your car off the road. Drive up them. Yeah, four-wheel drive. I did it once. It's scary. <laughs> and then you're like, I better back straight down and go home. We're going to Disneyland. And what happens, and this didn't happen, but if let's say that your car, uh, the, the, uh, something happens in your car, and now your car breaks down. And then your kids are like, Dad, when are we going to Disneyland? Well, don't you like it here in the desert, kids? It's so nice here. Don't you? Well, you know, there's people, they're playing in the sand. It's almost like the beach. And there's the sun, 115, 115. Dad, you said Disneyland. No, but you know, right here is really good. That's not your destination. See, the enemy wants to stop you and tell you that where you are right now is, is, is the end. It's where your destination is. And so we get focused on that. Why? Because if he can focus you on where you are now, if you've been going through some hard stuff, you got to make it through. So you begin to accept things and you begin to defend yourself and you go, well, this is good enough. And God's going, no, I got something more for you. I got something more for you to do. So if we accept uh, that, uh, that halfway point and say, well, it must be God. I was praying and this must be with God. No, God said, I'm going to California or wherever, right? For that vacation. Florida, thank you. If we are going there, then you got to say, I haven't got here yet, but I'm going. So though it linger, I begin to continue to run with the vision and declare what God has spoken. Right? Why? Because he showed it to me. He gave it to me. He put it in my heart. And if he put it there, then he's going to show me what I need to do. Genesis 31, 10 and 11 in breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and I saw the male goats uh, with the flock were streaked, speckled, and spotted. And the angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. So here he's saying, I have a dream. The goats are streaked, speckled, and spotted. So if you had that dream, what would you think? You would think I had bad pizza. I don't know what it was. That was strange. You know, I usually don't have dreams like that. That was really strange. And you'd go on with your life right? And just think nothing of it. So the dream in itself isn't enough. I must have revelation of what God is showing me so that I can move into what he has for me. So when he's showing me, when he's showing Jacob these sheep, he doesn't stop there, but he calls them and he says, Jacob, and I answered, here I am. And now I'm going to get revelation uh, of Jesus and I'm going to see Jesus in my dream. That, and maybe Jacob did or did not see that. But I'll tell you what he did see. He did see a branch that was streaked, speckled, and spotted. And he began to make that branch streaked, speckled, and spotted. And then every time the sheep would come out, he would put that branch in front of the sheep. And so what is he doing? He's writing down the vision and saying, you know what, sheep? You are streaked, speckled, and spotted. So now he says, move your streaked, speckled, spotted ones away because when you see mine producing here, you're going to know they're not yours. You keep the streak. Going. So Laban kept changing the deal, but every time God would change it to line up with Jacob in his vision. So it did not matter that Laban was trying to cheat him and was cheating him. God said, I'm with you. Get a vision. If he takes the streaked ones, I'll give you all spotted next year. Don't worry. Oh, I'm taking the spotted ones. Now they're going to be uh, speckled. I don't know. Whatever it is, God's like, I'm, I'm, I'm in this. But every time, what would he do? He would put that branch. So who is the branch? Jesus. Was he streaked, speckled, and spotted? Yeah, why? Because he was bruised for us. He took up our infirmities and our iniquities. And the curse that should have been on us was on him. And he freed us from the power of the curse. And he said, you're coming into the blessing of God. 
And now God's going to bless your life. And so every day, that sheep, oh, it's a black sheep. Oh, why did he take all the streaks, speckled and spotted? If only he had left me a few. He's like, you know what? God's in control. And I'm going to declare this, that God's vision and the dream that he gave me and the promise he gave me, I'm putting this, this picture, I'm writing down this revelation, and I'm going to put it before these sheep. And I'm going to say, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to produce offspring for me. And when the weak sheep would come, he would say, mm, not every sheep is mine. I don't want the weak ones. They, they, they're too much energy, too much food. They don't produce enough. You, Laban can keep those. And he would remove the, the branch. So he was in control of his breeding. Why? Because he was saying, this is the promise God gave me. What if every time... You made an investment. You said over your investment, this investment's going to produce income for my life. This is going to give me increase in my life in the name of Jesus. This is going to cause income to come. Oh, but it didn't happen. Look, they took, they changed. Doesn't, I'm going to take the promise of God. And God said that everything I put my hand to will prosper, that I am free of the curse, that he is the Lord who blesses my coming in and blesses my going out. He has met all my needs and he continues to do it right okay so let's look at genesis 31 uh verse 12 he said look up and see all the goats mating with the flock or streaked speckled and spotted so what did he say he says i want you to get a vision i don't care what you see in the natural in the natural they may not be streaked speckled and spotted but i want you to look up to me look up to heaven look up to the promise Look up from where you are now and start seeing that what I have declared shall come to pass in your life. This is where he's saying, get a revelation and begin to declare it. A herald will run with it. You're going to declare it over your life and speak it over your life, right? And he said, look up and see that all the goats of the flock are streaked, speckled, and spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. So I believe uh, that he's that he. I believe that he's coming in this time. I believe that this is a, 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 a an extension of that vision, and that he's hearing this, and that because it's it's in many scriptures. And now God saying, now's the time. You've got to increase. Now's the time to go. Okay, let's go on to verse thirty, and uh, chapter thirty, verse forty-one. Whenever the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in the troughs in front of the animals so they would mate near the branches. I want whatever I'm doing to be near to the promises of God. If, if you are a Jewish family and you don't even know the Messiah, what do you do? You put the Ten Commandments on your door frame so that when you go in, you're going, God's commandments, his blessing is over my life and over this household. And you may touch it on the way in and touch it on the way out. God's commandments reign in my life and over my household. So you're placing that there. Why? Because God said to do it. God said, I want you to put it there because my word is going to transform your life. You're going to remember what I said. You're going to write down the vision. You're going to run with it. You're going to herald it. You're going to speak what the word says, and you're going to declare what I have spoken over you, right? So if you get a, a dream, you need to get a vision on specific things that I need to do to see that dream come to pass. And then I want to take the promise of God and put it near that thing. So the specific thing was God said, I'm going to use this sheep to bring wealth into your life. I want to hear, I'm going to use this business to bring wealth into your life. I'm going to use this investment to bring wealth into your life. Then I'm going to take the promise of God and put it close to that and say, okay, increase in the name of Jesus. Amen? Okay. All right. Whenever this, okay. But when the, if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. And so the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and made servants and men servants and camels and donkeys. Okay. I'm going to read that again for you because I want you to hear it. In this way. In this way. Which way? He got a dream. He
He got a vision. He wrote it down and he heralded it. Every time the sheep would come in, he would speak it over them and he would say, you're going to line up with the word of God. And maybe some of the sheep, maybe not every sheep was speckled, streaked, and spotted. I don't know. Maybe some that came out, came out pure black. Well, Laban got some, but you know what? God's promise prevails. I don't know. But it does say that he became exceedingly wealthy. So don't allow a circumstance, well, I prayed this and I didn't see it. No, God's word declares it. This is the dream. This is the vision. This is the promise. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to declare it over my life. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And I'm not backing up from it, right? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. This is another dream that they've been given. The dream is the goal. The vision is seeing Jesus in the process. And the vision uh, brings uh, the prophetic speaking of God's promises over your life, right? So when I get a vision of Jesus, then I am declaring what God has spoken over my life. And I'm going to run with it, and I'm not going to give up, and I'm not going to quit, right? So he says in Joshua 1.7, and of course, remember, and this is just an interesting point, that Joshua is the name Yeshua, just a transliteration. So Moses, the prophet, brings them in uh, to an understanding of salvation, and, but they're not going to go into the promises until their life is being led by Yeshua. So I need Jesus to be leading my steps. I need him to be guiding me and I'm going to follow him into what he is doing. So the word says in Joshua 7, be strong and very courageous. So you got to remember what he's saying is, yeah, there's times you can be discouraged, you can be fearful, but that's not who you are called to be. God's not giving you a spirit of timidity, but he's giving you a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. So he is saying, don't allow what you're going through to keep you trapped in the desert He's saying that is just temporary. You are going on to a destination that has been spoken of by the promise of God that he has placed on your heart and in his word. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Live for God. You are holy. You are not working your way into salvation. But because you have been saved by grace, I make a choice to reflect God in every area of my life. And if it doesn't reflect Jesus, then I want to get it out of my life, right? All right. Then it says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. So God is going, I want you to follow after me. I want you to live for me. And then I want you to meditate on what my word says. And then I want you to always be speaking what my word says in this way in this way you're going to be prosperous and successful are you always speaking what god says well what if it didn't what if laban cheated you it's hard man especially in our country with all the criticism and all the it's hard not to start speaking critically god's going no, i want you to speak positively and I want you to speak what my word says over your life. God, we ask you for that this, this season, this year, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse, uh, chapter 4 and verse 4. So Joshua called together all the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe. And he said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Remember, he tells them, get ready, we're going to cross. And they're going to cross not when the water's low. God's going to cross when you can't do it without God. He's going to wait for it to be at flood stage. And what, as soon as the priest hit the water, the water backs up and stops. And now God is telling them, and this is where we're at now, he said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. It's at flood stage, but it's backed up now. Amazing, dry. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulders according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign in the future when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them 
that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So what God is saying is write down the vision and declare it. What's he saying? He's saying, you came into the promised land because you have a covenant with God. You came in when it seemed impossible. God said, I'm going to cause that. It seems impossible to be possible. And so God is saying, now that you have seen that miracle in your life, I don't want you to forget it. I want you to pass it on to the next generation so that they can know they are children of covenant, that they are children that I have loved, that they are children that I have a destiny for, that they are children that will not move by their strength alone and by the blessing that's come down generationally, but they will move into the blessing because they got a covenant with God. See, it's easy, and that's why as a generation, and that's where our nation's gone into so much blessing that the next generation forgets that it came because of prayer. It came because men and women uh, sought the promises of God and they sought the, 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 uh, the prosperity. They sought the favor of God in everything they did. And so it's easy to forget that. And God's going, I want you to remember this. And that's why you'll see that the enemies come against, oh, we got to remove this. We got to remove this. We don't want to do this. We don't, that's not really fair. That's why, because he wants your children to forget that they've got a covenant with God. And God's going, no, I want you to write down the vision. I want you to make it plain. I want you to run with it. And I want you to wait because it speaks of an appointed time. And though it linger, don't, don't give up. Wait for it. It will surely not delay. It will come to pass. And so how did Jacob become wealthy? Because he didn't give up. He didn't say, well, I guess I'm here in Laban's family now. I got a beautiful wife and children. No, God said, I'm, I'm bringing you to, to a new, I need you to go back. I got a covenant that comes before you and a generation before you, and I want to bless you and I want to cause you to, to move into that, right? So now he's going to stand in faith and he's going to see that increase come in his life. And he's going to declare, this is what God has done. And I'm going to go do what God's called me to do, right? So in your life, this year, 2020 vision. What does 2020 vision remind you of? And I'm just going to remind you because well, the Holy Spirit placed this on us. We've been seeing it. But 2020 vision, what? When you go into the doctor's office and the eye chart, and they have the eye chart up there, and they say, read the letters, and they go, which letter is that? I think it's an E. <laughs> oh, then they go, eh, we got we to gotta correct your vision, right? And then they'll do the little clicks and clicks. What do you see now? 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 Can you read this line? Can you read this line? Can you read? And finally, when you get down to 2020 and you're reading the letters right, okay, we're good. Sometimes you get past that. Yeah, 2015. I love that even more. 2020 vision means you are seeing what's on the chart and you are seeing it clearly. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm with you. I've always been here right by your side. But sometimes you haven't seen clearly what I have written for you. And so God is saying that in this year that you are to pray that you're going to get vision and you're going to have revelation of Jesus and you're going to see clearly what he has written down. And because you've seen it clearly, then when they ask you, what do you see? I see exactly what's written down. And just like with the eye chart, you read off the whole line and they go, yep, you're going to read off the promises of God and Gary, this is what God has said. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And I will declare this vision over my life because I see clearly this is what God has spoken. My family will worship God. My family will know God. My family will live for God. And we will see health in our lives and in our bodies. We will have long life, health, prosperity. We'll be satisfied with the long life. And they shall know the salvation of the Lord in their life. I thank you for that, Lord. In the name of Jesus, whatever God's placed on your heart to do, say, God, I thank you that this is from you. I thank you that this seems like a dream, but you've given me revelation and I'm going to take steps toward it. And I am going to bring your covenant promise into those steps so that they can be anointed by you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm just going to tell you this.
don't go out and buy sheep unless God said to buy sheep, right? And don't buy sheep if God told you to buy sheep and then not put the word over those sheep. In this way, he became prosperous. If God gave you a vision to do something, then let's begin to declare, this is what the promise of God declares. And you're going to prosper and you're going to increase in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you uh, that you give us vision and you give us understanding of Jesus. Or sometimes we don't even know what to pray, but you said you would pour out your spirit upon all people and your sons and daughters would prophesy. And so, Father God, we ask you to pour out your spirit in our lives, in our family. We ask you for that now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Father God, you said you would give the, the old men dreams. And I thank you that this is a generational blessing of seeing a, a picture of the future that will be passed on to generations uh, beyond us, to our children, to our children's children. And I thank you that vision comes into our life. Uh, how will we reach that dream? And vision comes into our children's lives and our children's children and beyond that the generational blessing comes into their life, that they have vision, a, a, a plan, a strategy, and that they are heralds of the word and that they declare your word and your promise over their life, that they may declare that you are the God of all creation who is concerned about the details of our life, who blesses our coming in and blesses our going out, causes us to know good things and gives us eternal life that we are overcomers, we triumph in Christ Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. God is with you. Amen.